Hey, welcome to the With Parents Podcast. My name is Jason Gant. I am the pastor of kids and families here at Church of the Resurrection. I'm so glad you tuned in. Today is an interview about whimsy. Uh, Part of our hope is to inspire, equip, um, and today you're going to be inspired through an incredibly fun, unique, Kansas City's own uh, ministry. You might not think of it as a ministry, but it became a ministry for this guy named Jordan. He's a friend of mine, and it's about Sidecar Santa. You may have heard about Sidecar Santa around here at Christmas. You're going to hear the story of how it came about, how it's bringing joy and blessings to kids and families all around the KC area, and how you might be inspired to do the same in your own unique way. So let's get into it. So I'm here with my friend Jordan. We've known each other a while, but he's also known as something else. What is that, Jordan? Sidecar Santa. Sidecar Santa. This is a phenom here in the Kansas City area. Yep. It really is. Like yep. there's a buzz about it every year. It's a unique thing to Kansas City. Actually, it's taken off across the country, but you are the original. I'm the original. And that's the story we're going to talk yeah. about today. Um, part of doing this podcast is about uh, inspiring, equipping, and also just having some fun. And your story is fun. But it is inspiring, and I and I want to get into that. So first of all, just tell us like how this all began. Uh, let's just tell the story from the beginning. Let's start there. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, it started because I really wanted a motorcycle. <laughs> um, my wife was very against it, and rightfully so. A lot of you know a lot sure. of bad things happen sure. on motorcycles, and uh, she said, "No, you're gonna tip over. You're gonna hurt yourself. You're gonna right. tip. You're gonna tip." And I she also said, "You know, you're gonna speed on the highway. You're just the 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 temptation is going to be there to speed and i was like i was like what if i guarantee that i can't tip the bike over and that i can't speed okay and she said she said thinking it's an absolutely impossible task she said (laughs) fine if you can guarantee that the bike she said i don't know how you you know training wheels you gonna put training wheels on the the bike or you know and i said i don't know but you know Give me the whatever criteria I need in order to, and actually there was a third one of uh, I needed to to like double my life insurance as well. Okay, fair um, enough. Fair enough. But she uh, just wants you to be safe. Of yeah, course. she wanted. She, loves she you. wanted everything to be safe. So uh, I started researching, and I was like, well, should I get a a, a tricycle a motorcycle with you know that right. have two Three in the weeks. back. Um, and then there's also another kind that has uh, has two, like in, the two front. in the front, one in the back. Right? Yep, yeah. and one in the back. Um, but you know me as I, I like things that are very unique. And um, yes. yes, when I was researching how I was going to accomplish this impossible task, I thought, what about a sidecar? Because that stabilizes the bike, right? Um, and it just be that. That sounds like something fun. So I started researching sidecar uh, motorcycles and turns out you can put a sidecar on basically any two-wheeled sure, vehicle sure. um you can put a you they you can get a sidecar for a vespa scooter i've seen it before i've That's physically seen me. it but yeah <laughs> um so i i i had the first thing down i was like okay well i'll get a motorcycle and i'll put a sidecar on it but then i was i was like well how am i going to beat the speed aspect right. and uh, the bike that I chose is called a Ural, U-R-A-L, uh, okay. for it's a Russian uh, uh, origin uh, from the Ural Mountains, and right. it's a it's technically a mountain bike, only has four gears, and if I'm going downhill, and the wind is at my back, with the sidecar, with the weight of the sidecar, with my weight, I can maybe get 50 miles an hour, so I can't even ride it on the highway. <laughs> So, yeah. so, that, uh, wait, so that checks both boxes. So that at checked, least the first two. Yep, those check that <laughs> checked those boxes. I went to my wife and I said, for my thirtieth birthday, this is what I want. And she was trapped, and she <laughs> she agreed. She was like, okay, well, I gave you the criteria. You met it. That's fair so, enough. You found a way. So I so go ahead. And uh, it also was a thing of. It, when I was researching, because I was, I too was afraid of tipping over. I mean, oh, sure. Uh, and I wanted to be able to ride it year round. Right. Uh, so part of riding year round, you know, in the winter, I was like, well, how am I gonna, how am I gonna do this? And 
I specifically chose this kind of motorcycle uh, because it is built and it's designed that I can engage the sidecar's wheel. So I have two wheels that can drive the engine right. instead of just the pusher tire that you sit on. Um, so every other two-wheeled or rather sidecar uh, vehicle you're, is basically right. dragging. Just pulling it beside you. Yeah, it's just dragging the sidecar along. Well, with this one, I can engage and uh, get a little bit more power and um, now it doesn't translate to power on the on the highway but it does allow me to do donuts in the snow and so oh, which has to be fun which is so much fun <laughs> so yeah so that's how i ended so now up. you're so you, you got the bike you're having I got the, the bike blast. yep your donuts in the snow your year-round rider mm -hmm. yep. but year-round means it's gonna get you're going to get freezing. Yeah. Get cold. It, I love this. I yes. Love this. Yes. Uh, and I mean, and they're actually, you can, you can go online and you can find these, there are calculators that say, you know, well, if it's such and such degrees outside and you're going, you know, X amount of speed, right. Then the wind, the cold wind that's hitting you actually translates to a, a certain you, degree, a, sure. certain, certain lower temperatures. Wind, wind chill, wind. Yeah. yeah I gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So it turns out if I'm going, I did the math on it where it was like, oh, well, on certain days of the year, I would be riding and, you know, I had goggles or glasses, whichever I chose that day. Um, if I go 30 miles an hour, then, uh, and it's say zero degrees outside, uh, it's snowing, whatever it may be, then it's uh, the wind chill is, gets minus 40 Holy cow. Got to a point where just my my eyes started to, to I, my, I would get tear marks that would freeze. Right, right. And so, uh, yeah, so part of it being really cold, I was like, how am I going to basically endure right. more hours outside on the sidecar? And part of it was layering up. But then I thought, you know what would be really fun was, was what if I got a Santa costume? Because those are really warm they're really hot they're i mean they're they're yeah. you know they're insulated right. and so right. i went to the party store just down the street here from the church i got a cheap suit it was maybe a hundred dollars right made of cheap felt it was falling apart um and uh yeah so i put that on and then i spent a day out riding and everywhere i went i, I didn't mean for it for sidecar Santa to come into existence, but that's how it came into existence. You just added the, cause that's fun. Yeah. And you like unique things. I like unique things. I, I know this just because, and I'll mention that one time you bought a Jeep, yep. that was that the steer wheels on the right side. Like right, right hand drive. European Jeep, yeah. Jeep driving yep. that you would have to back, back up through drive throughs to yeah. get your food yeah and that was just I, unique I, and fun. I like I like I like shocking people a little bit sure, sure I like making people smile and so specifically with that Jeep it was a thing of well you know if I'm going through the drive through of say Chick-fil-a I can't reach out the the, right. the other side the only way for me to go through the drive through is to reverse through the drive through Right. And it is a spectacle if you've ever seen a car go through the drive through backwards. Um, I, I can't imagine people driving off because they're like, we don't know what this guy's yeah. doing. Right? So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I do like, you know, surprising people. Sure. And so now I, now that uh, the first day, first couple days that I started wearing the suit, since I can't go on the highway, every single red light, every stop sign... There would be cameras everywhere. People would be honking okay. the horn. Wow. Sure. And I was like, wow, it's not every day. Love this. You, you don't see a Santa on a motorcycle, much less a sidecar Santa, and in the winter. Yeah. Right? So yeah. That's unique. Yeah. It, well, it's unique to, to just see anybody on a motorcycle in the winter, anyways. Right. But, right. Um, but yeah, so it just became a thing of uh, after that was the first year, the second year. I was like, you know, I'm going to do that again, but I'm going to up it a little bit. I, right. I'm, I'm going to try to do this and do it a little bit better every year. Right. And by better, that meant I started uh, bringing candy canes in a little pa in a little uh, pail that I got from a uh, from a store, right. and it, it says uh, reindeer treats on it, and it's just <laughs> a thing. Yeah, uh, I 
I, I added Christmas lights to the uh, to the whole rig. Yeah, uh, I got a Bluetooth speaker to blast Christmas music. Awesome. I threw I threw awesome. I throw it in the nose of the sidecar, so it makes it even louder. Okay, um, so you can hear me coming. Right, and uh, yeah. Well, you also you went out, you went and bought a a deer. Right? Yes, like yes, a, yes. Like one a, year, yeah, like one, an archery range. Yeah, an archery range. To put in the side. Uh, yep, I went to a uh, uh, Bass Pro Shop. So you had Cupid or or uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Rudolph. I, or... <laughs> I, I did put a big red nose on it. Okay, awesome. Um, so you I, had Rudolph. I weighted it down in the sidecar with uh, because it was made of foam. Uh, I, I weighted it down with sandbags and uh, yeah, rode around with a That's with awesome. a with a deer, and it was a. Uh, just as as the year started to, to tick by, it was a thing of like, oh, how can I make this better? How can I make this right, better? Right. And you know, how many more miles can I get? the The goal was I would weave through Kansas City between where I live, Reds, off, yeah, neighborhood from South Olathe yeah. to the Plaza. I'd go through. I go. I'd stop at shopping centers. Right. I stop in front of Target and Walmart. I go up and down those uh, the parking lots, and I give out candy canes, yeah. and just people loved it. Yeah. And it's it was fun. it was fun. Who and doesn't I, love whimsy? And it's and it's whimsical, yeah. right? You're going through your normal day, you're just getting through, st- and then all of a sudden, here comes Santa on a motorcycle, like, yeah, giving out candy. I yeah, mean, it's a it's a moment. It's like a smell the roses moment. Yeah. Right? I love that you want to make people smile. Oh, yeah. Because I know that's part of, like, your ethos. And that's yeah. part of what drove you to this, mm-hmm. right? And uh, But there's also, like, there's also a very meaningful part of this. It wasn't just for fun or uniqueness. There was a there's a heartfelt reason that part of this happens for you. Part of this, you were drawn to this passion. I wonder if you would share that. Yeah. So uh, we, uh, I'm unfortunately, and my myself and my wife are, not in a position we where we are able to have our own kids and um i don't talk too deeply about that i don't go too in depth about about that yeah but i love being an uncle being an uncle is the best thing ever and just being the fun uncle is 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 a great role to have and to be yeah and so um Tell everybody what you call yourself. Yeah, because I love this. So I have, <laughs> so I have, uh, I call myself a a level thirteen. Just became thirteen, level thirteen uncle because I have thirteen nieces and nephews. That's amazing in itself. And so yeah, so uh, and I spoil them. Uh, I I you know I'm always texting with them. Uh, so yeah, there are various eight. Like like I said, one was just newly born. Another one is turning seventeen. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Well, I know you've always loved kids, Jordan. And, oh yeah. Um, because we we were in actually uh, teen. We started youth student ministry. ministry together. Yeah. Years ago, and mm-hmm. every week we're working with teens, and uh, and so I just know that's a part of who you are. So it's cool how this came together. Mm-hmm. So here we are. You wanted a motorcycle. You, you you checked all the boxes, so you're safe. All of a sudden, the whimsy piece comes in with I'm gonna I'm gonna throw on the Santa suit. Yeah. Uh, you love to make people smile. It's about bringing joy. This this starts to become at least what we in the church call a ministry. Yeah. Uh, and I just know that's part of who you are. So all of a sudden now, now it takes a different turn. It's more than just doing miles. What happens? Yeah. Next? So well, what happened next was the world changed. The yeah. world changed with with COVID. And um, I was talking to a friend who has who has a kid, and they were telling me about it was 2020. Right. They were telling me about how they're doing school from home, how they can't see their friends, how it's so horrible on on the kids. And this was summertime and yeah. um, summer of 2020, and or not uh, uh, fall of 2020. Fall. Yeah. Uh, you know when that had really started. Um, and all the kids are stuck at home. All the kids are stuck at home. They can't see each other. They can't hang out with each other. They, and at the time as well, you know, everybody was masking. Everybody was social distancing. So there was zero going to the mall to go see Santa. Right. right. Complete and so, isolation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and after having this conversation with with uh, my uh, with my friend, I I said, I I went home. I thought about it for a while and I turned to my wife and I said, 
the children of Kansas City need Sidecar Santa. Yeah. And um, that that has driven me ever since. Yeah. And so I absolutely changed how I was doing it. I said, okay, I'm going to get rid of the cheap suit. I'm going to spend an, abs- <laughs> an absurd amount of money <laughs> on a mall Santa suit. Yeah. Step it um, up. Yeah, I'm going to step up everything that I can. And instead of just getting as many miles as I can get, I'm now going to go to kids' homes and visit with the kids, have them hop in the sidecar, take a picture, right. and, uh, and, and just help bring joy back into these kids' lives. And so how that wor- awesome. how that happened yeah. uh, it, or how how I worked it out with the, with the family was I posted on a on, on an app called Next Door right. to just my neighbors and I said hey guys you all know me from mowing the lawn and everything else you've probably seen me be Santa you know driving in and out of the neighborhood this year since everyone's been locked up yeah. Um, I'm not going to be doing what I'm what I have been doing. I'm going to start doing home visits. So here's my email. Yeah. And send me your information when a good time is to stop by, the name and age of your kid, what the uh what they want for Christmas. Right. Have you been having any behavioral issues? Right. That... All the secret details. Yes. Right. All the things that Santa, Santa should know. Santa knows, yeah. And so I would then arrange with the parent on a day uh, a particular day and time, I would text them beforehand, say, hey, I'm on my way, ETA is 10 minutes. Right. I pull up to the house as Santa in the full get up. Right. Um, and then, but not with the kid yet. Right. I would have, I would have the parent come out and then hand me a pre-wrapped gift. Right. And then I would take that gift, make sure that I have all the details right of the kid, I would uh, put it away, like on the seat of the sidecar, and then I would circle the block. And then I'd tell the parent, hey, go tell your kid to sign out of class for a few minutes and to just go check the mail. Right, right. Make an excuse to get them outside in the front yard. Right. And so I would then turn on the Christmas music as loud as I could go, <laughs> and I'd come around the block. The kids would see me. They'd freak out. Right, like I'm in and the front yard, like, here comes Santa. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, here's Santa Claus. And right. I would come up, and I would say, hey, David, how are you? And, and right. uh, yeah, that's just kind of how it grew. I would, it was so I would give Yeah, I would give them the gifts. They'd get in the sidecar. I'd be like, "Hey, have you been good? Have you know? Yeah. Have you been helping out around around the house? You've been listening right. to your mom. You've been all these things Help and uh, parents, right? Yep, support the parents and and so actually one of the things that I do uh, a lot uh, and and did a lot, still do, um, is uh, say if I get stopped at a red light, I, I'm pausing the 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 story a, a minute, yeah. but. If, uh, if I get stopped at a red light and uh, the kids roll down the window and they wave and they say hi, and I say, hey, how's it going? Have you been good this year? Right. I always say, listen to your mom. She's smarter than your dad. <laughs> and parents always... Which I'm sure they appreciate. Yep, yeah, they, they always well, freak me <laughs> Um Back to the original story, though. So I would, uh, yeah, I would uh, give the kid the gifts. We'd chat a little bit. If the parent was okay with it, then we would just cool. go up and down the street. Yeah. Yep, yeah. wouldn't break eye eye contact with the so that, you sure. know parents could see. see. Um, wouldn't break more than ten miles an hour. Yeah. So, yeah. And this and and here's what's amazing, Jordan, uh, because you know you, you're doing this without payment. Yeah. You know anybody would expect to to give you a little something, but this for you this has become a, a sacrificial act an act of joy, an act of ministry, an act of blessing a child, blessing a family, bringing great joy. And and on behalf of all those families that you have brought this moment of whimsy and moment of wonder, thank you. Because we need that, like, right? We need that. And we need yeah. people who have a passion that want to want to offer that. And that's why I wanted you, thanks for being courageous and sharing a little part of just your personal story and recognizing that uh, level 13 uncle. But I would say... 
uh, there's about a million people in Kansas City. I don't know how many kids there are. Let's say there's let's say there's half a million kids, or you know, that you're getting to be a part of their lives in some way. Because mm-hmm. even if you haven't done a visit, a parent's probably shown your Instagram post to yeah. their kid of like, look at Santa on a motorcycle. How cool is Santa, right? Yeah. Or maybe dads that drive motorcycles, right? yeah, <laughs> right. Other yeah. Uh, that's just that's just awesome, man. And uh, I, I just think that's a lot of fun, and that's part of why I wanted you to share your story. You have um, uh, a giving heart. You've always had a generous heart, as, far, as long as I've known you. But it's not just kids. There's a there's a memorable no. story that I want you to share that I think is really powerful. Yes. And, yes. and before you do it, let me context this. Sure. There's a little bit of of love your neighbor under under here, right? Because mm-hmm. Jesus called us to love God and love neighbor. But what's kind of fun about this is you're doing this all around the city, and this story is in your in your own neighborhood. Yeah. Which I just think is like cool. Yeah. In my own neighborhood, just one street away, uh, there's this lovely 90, 94-year-old woman, and uh, she was homebound, and uh, her daughter uh, saw my post on, on next door and said, hey, can you come and visit with my mother? She can't leave the house. She's always wanted to ride in a motorcycle. It would just be fun to get her in and just to spend some time with her. And I, I had no idea that this woman, I could see her house from my house. Like wow. it was, wow. uh, so I said, absolutely. So I, I pull up, it took some time to get her out of the house in, you know, into a coat and then to get her actually into the sidecar. But then, you know, we took pictures and she said, Oh, can you turn on the engine so I can hear it? I was like, yeah, absolutely. I turn it on. And yeah, it's a very old, design of a motorcycle if you research them and so they they have this chucka 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 kind of sound um and she said she said all right let's go and i was like what (laughs) we're going and she said yeah and i was like okay and and you know (laughs) so we 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 start going around and and you know she's telling me i've wanted to be in a motorcycle on a motorcycle rather I've wanted to be on a motorcycle my entire life. My parents never let me. My husband didn't think it was safe. I grew up with, you know, my brother had motor, uh, rode on motorcycles, but my parents wouldn't let me get on the back. And I've, I've always wanted to do it. I've never been able to. And so she said, and now, you know, my brother is long dead. And, uh, she said, there's nothing more in the world that I want than to. And I said, okay, let's wow. go. So and cool. so we, we start going and she, I've never seen a saint of a woman of, 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 of such, of, of such age. I've never seen so much joy. Oh, wow. Just, just, she was, she was yelling. She was screaming. She was throwing her hands in the air. I mean, <laughs> you know, a half hour earlier, she was bedridden and, you know, we're, we're, I'm in the suit in her house, (laughs) you know, getting, trying to get her outside and into just, just to sit in the sidecar. And she is just exploding with energy. She starts crying. She said, and I said, you know, what do you think that your brother would say to you right now? And she said, she said, he would say, look at me now, look at me now. And, um, yeah, it was just a, it was a beautiful, beautiful moment. We got her out. Uh, I mean, we, uh, I did take her out of eye shot of her, of her family, um, because she said, just keep going. And then she said, go faster, go faster. We're in, we're in a neighborhood. I'm like, I can't, I was like, I can go up to maybe 15, maybe 20. And then she says, turn on to this street. And I'm like, okay. And it's a 45 mile an hour street. She's like, go as fast as you can. I was like, I was like, are you sure? And she said, go as fast as you can. I want to go as fast as you can. And so I didn't go as fast as I could. I did maybe 35. Sure. But I mean, her, she had this big puffy coat on and it was falling off. It was flying off. She was screaming so loud. She was laughing so hard. Um, and what a great moment! Yep, went back into, brought her back to her, uh, to to her house, and uh, I said, "You see that house right between those two? That blue house? That's that's where I live." Yeah. And so, 
if ever you want to do this again, I'll do this every single day if you want. Yeah. I'll do this every year if you want. Just have your daughter text me. She has my information. Right. And I'll come over. No problem. Yeah. And, awesome. um, yeah. Man, that's awesome, Jordan. Like, because, <laughs> I mean, you didn't expect that, right? Like, oh, no. Like, when you're imagining what this could be. Yeah. Like, I feel like God continues to surprise you. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, when I've... I've I've never, I've never, this, this, this woman, uh, was when we were done, she was laughing and she was crying so hard and it was, wow. it was such an emotional moment. Um, and she came around, she, she gave me this huge hug and she, she said, you know, thanks for, thanks for just absolutely changing my life. And I was like, oh my, I, I couldn't, I couldn't even comprehend what was going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was it was it was a thing of, hey, uh, and I I said this to her. I've said this to my wife. I said this to you, that you know. Because the question has been asked, how long am I going to keep doing this? Sure, sure. Um, and I've always said, as long as there's air in my lungs, I'm going to be Sidecar Santa every year. Well, I'm going to hit as many houses as I can. I'm going to hit as many cul-de-sacs as I can. I'm going to visit as many kids as I can. Yeah. And I just want to bring joy to these people. That's awesome, man. <clears throat> and you know, that's 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 what Jesus's hope is for us all is to is to share joy with others, to choose joy. And so part of why I wanted to share your story is it's just fun and it's a Kansas City original, yep. which is pretty cool. And I know the guy Mm -hmm. So I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. Uh, Sidecar Santa. And it's taken off cities all around. Yeah. They're, they're sprouting up. Sidecar, yeah. different, different cities and towns, right? Yeah. If I was if I was smart enough, I, I should have copyrighted <laughs> it long ago. But uh, now, so I am on Instagram at, yeah. uh, at Sidecar Santa is awesome. me. And, um, you know, part of the arrangement that I make with the parents is in lieu of payment, that they take lots of pictures and yeah. that they send them to me and they allow me to post it on awesome yeah um so uh yeah and but, i've seen these pictures and they've been sprinkled in throughout this uh podcast yep. uh, as our awesome uh, editor mike uh, has done that yep. and uh, thank you for that because I, my hope was that you would just hear a great story but also be inspired to to and and to ask yourself like what is god maybe calling me to do to provide joy to others because you may have a passion. You may say, gosh, I really want a motorcycle. Like that started as like, I want to feel the excitement of a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason that can't be married with a ministry call by God. Um, we often talk about in the church, at least, uh, spiritual gifts and spiritual call. But then there's also just personal passion, personal abilities that God can use and do incredible things. And so your desire to do things that are unique to experience new things, to have fun uh, on, driving around a motorcycle uh, in the snow and stay warm, sprouted into something that God used and is continuing to use. And, and let me give a caveat to people that he's doing doing this a lot, so give him some patience because he's doing it in his spare time and his PTO and this is his personal ministry, but it's just such a fun story to share. I'm, I just appreciate you bringing joy and especially as we've come through the COVID season, uh, and especially there's going to be kids that remember this and they'll be inspired to do different things uh, mm -hmm. in their communities. Yeah. And uh, on behalf of the Kansas City community, Jordan, thanks for thanks for stepping up and being Sidecar Santa. Yeah. Because uh, I have loved, I've, loved watching you. Yeah, I love <laughs> I love supporting parents any way I can. I love, you know, this this has become a ministry just not even for me but for my wife as well she supports me and the fact that we have sacrificed we don't take vacations we don't take time off yeah. so that way i can bank all of my time off for for work and to be in december That's to be doing this and so uh yeah i never thought that that just wanting a motorcycle could turn into something so huge and now that other people are replicating around the country that's too cool so well and i want to close by just sharing uh, an insight that i might offer to parents you know parents sometimes we uh, especially those of us who are in the faith might be uh, not sure how to handle the santa question with our kids right yeah. and um, jordan's particular ministry is a great example there's also a friend of mine who's a pastor who invites a santa uh, dressed 
uh, in uh, his clothing on Christmas Eve to come down the center aisle of his church and to kneel in front of the creche, which is the baby Jesus, takes off his hat, kneels, then puts it on, and then kind of leaves to the side with, with haste. And it's so that every parent in there can say what Santa's doing is bringing joy to children all around the world and that Jesus wants kids to, to experience that joy. So I imagine that Jordan is in that sidecar and every time he's going down that street, I know he's connecting with God through this because of the joy in the kids' hearts and minds and, and families that are so appreciative um, because everybody's going through a tough time and we need those moments of hope and we want to be the kind of church that radiates hope. And, uh, and thank you for being that hope-filled inspiration for us. And uh, so any, any final thoughts or final things you want to share? Uh, no, uh, you can, you can absolutely hit me up on my Instagram, uh, at sidecar Santa. Uh, the, uh, email that I use is Jordan's iPad, J O R D A N S I P A D. Like my, I, my gave my iPad its own email address. <laughs> um, and you can, if you want to arrange a visit, like I said, it's it's absolutely free. I just ask that I can use whatever images that you take for my social media. Yeah. But I also ask that you be gracious because I, I have a lot of people who want... <laughs> a lot of demand, huh? I, it's, it's a big demand, and I can't always fit everybody in. And so, so maybe it's time to build a team. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how the years grow. Um, but, uh, I'm, 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 uh, yeah, I'm going to keep doing this. And if you want it for, if you want me to come visit your kid, if your kid is having a hard time in school, yeah. um, then absolutely. Um, That's consider great. me a resource, but please be patient because it's hard. Uh, <laughs> it's there's, a lot. A, there's a lot of demand. Well, we appreciate you, Jordan. Thanks again for coming. And thanks again for tuning in to the podcast. We would love for you to join us in worship on the weekend here at Resurrection. Just go to resurrection.church. Check us out on TV, online, and at any one of our six locations. And uh, as we approach the holidays this year, let's keep stories like this, inspiring stories where people are sacrificial uh, toward others at the heart of what the Christmas season is about. Thanks again for tuning in.